Praise God. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day. I'm losing a lot of weight. That's why you see it all loose. All right. Praise God. So um, from the other day, and you know, this is the 25th day of the fast. Come on. We, we got this. We got this. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's, it's tight, but it's right. So I'm going to answer the three questions. Um, I got them now. I had them written down. Remember, did the disciples belong to a church? Well, I'm going to go ahead and give somebody, uh, anybody did the research. See, that's another thing, and I'm not trying to be funny. Most church folk, they're not researching. You know, we as a generation have gotten lazy. Everything is internet, everything. You, know, you have to search into your spirit says this is the answer. Now, you and I both know <laughs> what the common answer is, but I'm talking, I'm looking for answers that are deep. So if anybody have some, I'm going to go ahead and answer them now. So the first question was, did disciples belong to any particular church? The second question was, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they, um, were they part of a sector or were they the church? All right. And then the third question was, can a person unsell their soul? All right, so we're going to go in. I need y'all to go ahead and press share tag because, and you're going to have some people that be like, whoa. And that's why I'm going to go straight to scripture. So give me a moment here. I am going straight to scripture. Remember, I told you we need to go back to principles, not opinions. Principles is the word of God. That way, nobody can rebuke it and refute it. Come on, somebody. And if anybody have any answers, go ahead and write them in. Praise God. Good evening. Good evening. How you doing, Nakia? All right. So, praise God. Praise God. We're talking about the disciples of Jesus Christ. Did they belong to a church? And I want to give you biblical sound answers. Mm, 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 mm. All right, first of all, I want to know who does anybody know the 12 disciples' names? Oh, I'm not playing. We're we, we getting ready to start dissecting stuff like never been before because people, we have a church unlearned. Okay, so the first disciple was Philip, then Bartholomew. I can't hardly say the name, but how about I spell it? B A R T H O L O M E Y. Nathaniel. That's right. Hallelujah. I spelled it. Matthew, Levi, <laughs> Thomas. Hold on. Let me finish. I lost it. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. All right. So Simon called Peter. Y'all already know that. All right. Then Andrew. James, John, the son of Zebedee, then Jesus, another one, B-O-A-N-E-R-G-E-S, where it said Philip, then Thaddeus, which was the Judas son of James, already said, okay, then we had another James, Matthew, and Simon, and Judas, so you had Judas, Simon the Canaanite, Matthew, James, Thomas, I'm going to, I'm going to say this word. Hold on. Bartholomew. Okay. I might say it wrong. All right. Thaddeus, Philip, John, James, Andrew, and Simon called Peter, the 12 apostles. Now the question was, did the apostles belong to any church? All right. And nobody have, anybody have an answer? Did they belong to any church? Okay. Well, let's talk about these. In Christiana, the disciples were the students of Jesus during his ministry, which sometimes means only the 12 apostles. But the gospel speaks of the different number of the disciples in the books of Acts. So disciples and apostles were different, okay? All right. Praise God. Praise God. Let's continue. The disciples themselves have disciples. The apostles themselves had disciples. The word disciple is used to a way of self-identification for those who seek to learn from Christianity. Praise God. The term disciple comes from the ancient Greek language 
word coming to English by the way of Latin, disciples, which means disciple should not be confused, which is apostle. But actually, apostle means messenger, he that is sent. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. We breaking that thing down. So my question was, was the apostles belong to any church? The, the answer is no. They were students of Jesus Christ. Now, my question is, if the Pharisees and Sadducees, which were the early church, why didn't Jesus pick disciples from that sector, which they were called sectors? Now, now that's the second question. What were the Pharisees and Sadducees? They were called the church, right? But really, it was a sector of the church, pretty much how we have today. Pentecostal, come on somebody, Seventh-day Adventist, Methodist, Presbyterian. You understand what I'm saying? A sector in those days meant um, a, a different name, a different group. Oh, it makes sense what I'm saying? I'm, go I'm going somewhere. So why didn't Jesus pick disciples or apostles out of that group? I'm going somewhere. I, I, I don't ever just, just get on here because I I'm trying to tell you, so I'm trying to teach you something. And some of you are not going to like it, but guess what? I challenge you to challenge me back and, and if I'm lying. So what am I saying? The mainstream church is truly the Pharisees and Sadducees. Y'all don't see that? They don't lay hands no more. They preach and they teach. They think it's mega ministry. They think it's prosperity. They think it's money. They think it's, it's salvation. You come on somebody, don't play with me. The, the apostles knew one thing. That's why it was the commission. They were sent. Oh, and, and, God, and God was like, I, I just want you to take Two of, you know, let, 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 let's break this thing down because I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. But we're talking about prosperity too, right? I, I'm going somewhere. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Work with, walk with me, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and say, what did Jesus tell the disciples, the apostles to do. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of age. In Acts, Jesus promised disciples that the Holy Spirit will inspire them. Now, hold on. Then he gave them a new commandment. Hold on. The new commandment is termed used in Christianity to job. Jesus commanded, he said, in the new commandment I give you in John 13, 30 is to love one another. So wait a minute. Hold on. You mean to tell me that Jesus didn't go to the mainstream? Jesus sought out people, different people. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And then formed 12 apostles and then sent them out to make disciples. Something was wrong with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus says, you are a generation of vipers. I'm going somewhere. You might not like me. We have a generation of vipers the same day today as they did back then. You can't trust mainstream because mainstream is mainstream. Pharisees and Sadducees that didn't even know that Jesus was the son of God. I'm going somewhere because that same spirit is what's crippling the churches today. And I'm going somewhere with this. I couldn't understand why Jesus took me out of church in 2015. I could not understand that. I said to myself, I'm going to turn off this phone because she's going to call me back. Hold on. And, and, and I got to get this stuff out. Praise God. Praise God. I couldn't understand that when God took me out of church in 2015, because I hadn't been saved all my life. But you know, it's, it's a routine. Everybody go to church. Even unsaved people go to church. Don't, don't show up on Easter because everybody named mommy in church. And God said, then I'm doing something. And I can tell you since 2015 to now, and I don't care what nobody say. I'm more anointed than, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to boast, but you can test my spirit by the spirit of God. I'm more anointed than I ever was in church because God was showing me something. You are the church, Deanna. What am I saying? You are the church people of God. You got it all twisted. Some of you go to a building, not understand that you are the church of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you something. When you go to church, how many times do you speak of Jesus Christ? 
When you go to church, do they do what Jesus Christ did? Because every place that Jesus, oh, I'm been preached up in here tonight because they're full of power of God. Let me tell you something. There were times when they was, and they was always after Jesus. Are they always after you? Well, come on, somebody walk with me. They, they were always trying to plot and plan against Jesus. Are they always trying to plot and plan against you? And it was so crazy because Jesus always was cool and calm with it. Except when he went into the, the sanctuary when they was dealing. Oh, I'm God, I got somewhere to go with this. Do you know that they are dealing in the sanctuary today? Uh, um, come on, they have vendors. Did he foresee that we would do this? Y'all have vendors in your church and you're not even supposed to do that, thus said the Lord. Y'all ain't ready for me because I'm a different type. I'm an orthodox baby and I know they don't like me, but I know who I am. Jesus are calling people separately. Come out of her because I got something that I want you to teach. The same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Don't you understand that they can't kill the spirit of Jesus Christ of Nazareth? We are not like mainstream. We will not be like mainstream. We won't flow like mainstream. We won't talk like mainstream. We don't walk like mainstream because we're not mainstream. That's why I asked you that question. Were the apostles part of a church? Now, I need you to hear me and to clarify something. I am not bashing every church, but most churches in America, the propaganda, don't play with me. I can, I can tell you what I'm talking about. They don't give altar calls. You don't feel the spirit of God like you used to. They don't preach the truth. I don't want to hear it. Hallelujah. That's why I asked y'all those questions. I don't just ever just do some. God told me to ask them questions. So we answered the first two, not the last one. Now I'm going to have to um, turn this back on. Can a person sell they unsell their soul? Oh, some of y'all going, but I, I, I'm, I'm going somewhere with you. Okay, why this thing coming on? If we have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in order to be saved, he says, those that confess that Jesus Christ died and rose in the flesh, they will be saved. That's a confession, right? So you mean to tell me that when these evil people say, I'm going to sell my soul, give me them riches, give me that fame, that they can undo that? I'm going somewhere and you're not going to like me. And I challenge you to get in any scripture and come on, come see me. Come see me. Come on. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. So if we confess it and they confess it, can it be undone? Now, hold on. It's just the same as once saved, always saved. No, that's not true. You have to always be living saved. Well, here's the deal. We're talking about the selling of a soul. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me, let me go scripture. Let me go scripture with this thing because it, it's just too much stuff. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all know, y'all know what happened just now? My grandson. My grandson had had my daughter phone and was trying to call me. That boy got my spirit. Oh, he gonna be, he already won. Can I tell y'all what happened while I'm looking for this? Now I know this is off track, but it's not really because we're talking about demons, right? So they was at his birthday party. And um, we ain't gonna talk about that because I'm gonna say something I probably don't want to say. And they had brought him a um a dinosaur with some red eyes. Mm-hmm. I didn't say nothing, but you know, I was looking like, guess what? So they turned it on and the eyes lit up. He said, oh, no. <laughs> you know, I was laughing. Everybody looked at me like, who's who spirit? He got my spirit. Yes, he do. He, he was like, oh, no. <laughs> and, and when he don't like something, he said, oh, no. I mean, with so much force. The boy is two years old going on 40. Y'all ain't ready for me. That boy... But I had prayed over her stomach for years. Y'all ain't ready for me. So let me continue. Can you? See, so we're going to go there. Hold on. Because I, I, I think we have to go scripture. Okay, here we go. All right. So they even have it. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I want to go straight scripture about this. Okay. Can you really sell your soul? All right. That's the question. But the question is, can you unsell your soul? All right. So I want to ask you a question. Behold, Ezekiel 18, 4, it says, behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul, but hold on. The soul who sins shall die. Now, y'all got to understand what that means. I'm going to say it again. Ezekiel 18, 4 said, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. But let me ask you something. 
If you do not confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord, can you die without God and go to hell? Well, vice versa. If you go to Hollywood and you say, you know what? The same, the same deal when he took Jesus on that pinnacle. As a matter of fact, let's go there. I'm going I'm to walk this thing all the way out. Excuse me. Hold on a minute. And it seems like when you're trying to do something, you know, on the pinnacle. All right, so hold on a minute, because I want to show you something. Because a lot of people, we just really don't know. Okay, so hold on. Here we go. Luke 4, 5. And he led him and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. So Matthew 4, verses 5, all the way through 8. Listen to what he says. And he led him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That is the spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Matthew 4, 5. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. All right. Luke 4, 9. And he led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the pinnacle. So then it says, we quickly see the first mention of Jesus being taken anywhere. It simply says, and the devil led him. But here's the thing. Luke 4, 9. He led him and he tempted him and he says, if you will fall down and worship me, I will give you all of the kingdoms and the glory thereof. So can a soul be unsold once you do that? I'm going to ask you something. And I'm going deep. I'm going deep. And, and here it is. Remember my mandate by the spirit of God. God tells me things. And all you have to do is go to God. Come on, somebody. Ali. Michael Jackson. I think we all can attest. I think as he got older and he realized what was going on, he tried to pull out. Look how they did him. So hold on. Because he called various friends of a friend. They're trying to kill me. They're trying to do this. They're trying to do that. Why didn't God stop it if he can be unsold? Because I'm sure he was trying to get out of it. I'm sure he had understand. Like, wait a minute. What have I done? And I know this is a touchy subject, and I know some people might not agree, and I understand. Whitney Houston. Now, and I'm going here deep because I have to. Because this is this is the last hour. This is what we're dealing with. I don't care what nobody say. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we at. Because this 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 is a walk for your soul. You sitting up there worrying about a job, a money, a man, a husband, a wife, all that stuff. This is for your soul. I always did love her. And God told me, I said, God. What happened? He says she was supposed to use her gift for the kingdom of God. I just said something. So if it can be undone, what they do with their with their will, their free will, then why does it happen to them like that? Because I'm sure even in her last days, she saw the handwriting on the wall. I'm going here. Prince, you think that these people don't feel that somebody's trying to kill them or something is trying to happen? I'm sure they are pleading. So you mean to tell me that somebody pleading, somebody begging, somebody saying, okay, wait a minute, I've made a mistake. Why does not God allow a change to be to become? Why, 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 why they can just slip away? Why is it that they have to die the way they die? Y'all ain't ready for me, huh? If anybody can find in scripture and answer me some of those questions. So my answer is this. I know that God has all power in his hands, but I told you, ooh, this is good. Do you remember when I told y'all about the spiritual authority in Luke 10, 19? He says, let them have dominion. Remember when I told y'all that God can't do anything? That's why everything that has been done, Moses, Joshua, Abraham, it was through, through the spirit of a man or a woman of God because God himself don't even have authority. That's why y'all say, well, if God uh, is running everything, how come he can't stop this? How come he can't do this? Because they have no spiritual authority because he said, let them have spiritual uh, authority and dominion. We have dominion. That's why God is looking through the earth. Where's that man of God? Where's that woman of God who will do it for me? Stand in the gap for me. Will command ye me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I know this stuff is some deep teaching, but you can go and, 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 and go and search the scriptures for yourself. I'm going somewhere with that. I'm going somewhere with all this. I don't I'll just get up in here and ask questions. You know why this all came about? 
Because God say that these young people and older people are giving their souls away to Satan, dying without him because they want stuff, because they want fame, because they want a name. And it should not be. And we, as children of God, we don't really preach on this level. We just say, oh, you want to be saved? Um, Jesus Christ the Savior. Um, you like no, 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 no. You got to tell them the cost. Hallelujah. That's why he say, choose this day. Who you going to serve? This stuff real. You got pastors scared to talk about it. Why do you think they have a kingdom of darkness? What am I saying? I'm all saying this. Demons are real. And the devil is real. And he's trying to take people to hell. And he's not playing. That's why I, I was led to ask you those three questions. Praise God. Praise God. And in these days, the church is not the church. I don't care what you say. They're not preaching repentance. They're not bringing people to the altar. They're not preaching salvation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. No, they're not. They're not preaching abstinence. They're not preaching celibacy. They're not preaching holiness. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to preach that thing to reach that thing. This stuff is by spirit, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. You can't do this without the spirit of God. And they're trying to do it without the spirit of God, and it is not being done. And so flesh, and it's a mess. Oh, yeah, I mean, they could preach good. I mean, have you given everything? But they're not preaching repentance. That's why John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of God at hand. Now, hold on. That was back then. Isn't it the same message today, the Great Commission? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I like the way you said that. Nothing new under the sun. Praise God, praise God. That took so much out of me, just those three questions. I felt the power of God and also felt another power. I mean, I felt the devil put, uh, you know, I'm ready. Can I tell you something? Anytime you speak about demonic entities, the enemy will try to attack your body, your mind, your, your technical things, your iPad, everything. Because he don't want people to know the truth. He doesn't want you to know the truth. All he wants you to do is, is come on, complain. Come be a star. As a, matter of fact, he, as a matter of fact, he is giving you the same opportunity he gave Jesus. If you just fall down and worship me, I, I give you all the glory of these kingdoms. I give you everything you want. Hallelujah. But he never tells you for your soul. He don't tell you that part. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And here you are. You might be a millionaire, a billionaire, and all that stuff. But what have you traded? Your peace, your joy, your anointing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If you notice, and I'm not trying to hate on nobody, because let me tell you something, and I preach this on purpose. In order to truly be an effective teacher, you must have a foundation of love. So I love everyone, but I don't play. I'm going to tell you the truth in love. And if you don't like it, God bless you, go to God. We got to get back to souls. That's why all this came about. God said, the other day, not preaching about souls. He said, my people out here dying. Hold on. He even called the sinners his people. They're God's people. And they're dying without God because you got a church that's so busy looking good that you don't want to be good. We're supposed to go to the highways and the byways. We're supposed to go into, oh, I'm about to hear you. We're about to go. We got supposed to go in the club, the strip club, the jig joint, wherever. But you can't go if you're dirty. Because you're going to get pulled down with them. Y'all ain't ready for me. That's why it's important that you preach holiness. Because only by the spirit period of God can you, the, the pure spirit of God that you can fight off any entity. Because demons are real whether we like it or not. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Walk with me, walk with me. Let me tell you how you know demons are real. Have you ever walked, and, and even in your house at night, and you felt a presence? You ain't crazy. You could play crazy. Everybody can feel a demon. And just like when, if you're going through and you start praying and the power of God hit that room, you'll feel the presence of God as well. There are entities. There is the kingdom of God and that's the kingdom of darkness. Choose ye this day, God says, who you will serve. Because you cannot serve God and mammon. Hallelujah to his name. Praise God. Praise God. Ooh, I got to get up off of here. I feel my body being attacked. I ain't going to lie. They don't like this kind of preaching and teaching. I don't know. That's one thing. Um... Y'all do know I got anointed by prophetess Bynum, despite of who she she is. She still was powerful, so I don't hear all that foolishness. But she told me something when she was mentoring me. She said, whenever you really give a powerful word, the enemy will try to hit you in your body, your mind, 
<laughs> Y'all ain't ready for me. But I think, as a matter of fact, on a personal note, I think that's why a lot of people don't want to go deeper. Because at one point, I didn't. That's why I was straddling the fence like most of you are. Because you stay right here, you, you got in a safe zone, but not really. Them demons come in after you, it does not matter. And yes, the higher you go, I'm talking about, uh, I'm about to share some things. Because I, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to get it all out. I'm going I'm to die empty. Y'all ain't hear me. I'm going to live full and die empty. Die empty mean everything that God tell me to say. Hallelujah. Everything that God tell me to do. There are times, like I didn't go to bed till 4 o'clock this morning. You don't know why? I can feel Sometimes the bed just shake. I'm not lying. I mean, I've been this has been happening for a long time, so it really don't matter. I'm talking about spiritual wickedness in high places for real. I, I could tell you some things that'll blow your mind. And sometimes it is discouraging. But then I'm reminded they did it to Jesus, they'll do it to you. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And that's why God says this has to be a relationship. That's why he says those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. If you can't get in the spirit and worship God and walk in the spirit, hear in the spirit, move in the spirit, you cannot fight this in the flesh. That's why he said those that worship me must worship me in spirit. Because when you have the spirit of God, then you can hear the truth and you can move in the truth. The reason why people don't move in the truth, they're not moving in the spirit. This is not about religion. It's about relationship. I, I I didn't get that when I first started going to church. Because, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, everybody, oh, you got it down pat. Now, I mean, y'all be you know how to speak in tongues. And, 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 and I mean, y'all be just being tripping, really. But spirit is a whole different level. Walking in the spirit, talking in the spirit, moving in the spirit. It requires time with God. It requires the presence of God. It requires the word of God. And guess what? When you're wrong, be woman and man enough to say, I missed it. That's God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to get out of here, though. But I love you through Christ. And, and all, it's all love. It's all love. If anybody don't preach, don't preach. <laughs> Look at me. I can't even talk. I'm so, I'm so full of the spirit, you guys. I'm serious. I'm gone. <laughs> but anytime, if you don't preach by love and for the love of Jesus, why are you preaching? For money? For fame? Because people love you today. Crucify you tomorrow. You know how they did Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna. And then crucify, crucify. That's it. So God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Where will I sow? Just for that is who we are. Mm, ain't nobody playing. Let's get it. God bless. <laughs>